Hello, and welcome back to What's That with Prisma Cloud, the show that breaks down complex cloud security topics into easy to understand concepts. I'm Tohar from Palo Alto Networks. In part one of this episode, we discuss the fundamental details of software composition analysis and the role it plays keeping your system secure. We looked at how gaps get developed using open source building blocks and why vulnerabilities often appear on open source code. While the process of scanning these vulnerability might sound straightforward, the reality is much more complicated. Due to the packages, registry, package managers, and multiple direct and indirect dependencies. If you missed part one, visit the link in the description to learn more about how SEA works and protect your open source packages. We'll discuss the details of SEA execution, starting from the challenges that it aims to address. The major challenges associated with SEA can be boiled down to three questions. One, how do I figure out what dependencies do I have and which of those have vulnerabilities? Two, how do I know if vulnerabilities are exposed in my software? And three, how do I fix vulnerability without introducing breaking changes? Early software composition analysis tools were created to answer the first question. AppSec teams would buy an SEA tool that they would periodically run against code bases to identify dependencies and their version numbers, and then cross-reference those results with the vulnerability databases. The results and glyphs of identified vulnerabilities, often provided in the CSV files, would then be handed over to the developers to deal with. As you can imagine, it caused major friction and gave SEA a bad reputation, not only because it was created a ton of ad hoc work for developers, but also because it didn't take into account the second question. There are several factors that make it challenging to know if your vulnerability is exposed. 7 to 8% of vulnerabilities are identified in indirect dependencies that developers may not even be aware of. SEA tools have since evolved to take more developer-friendly approach, so that as developers integrate packages into their code bases, they get feedback within their existing tools and early in the development lifecycle, when it's fastest and cheapest to address those issues. Great SEA tools also go beyond just identifying the vulnerabilities to help with answering the third question. To fix a vulnerability in your code base, the straightforward answer is to identify the version with a patch and bump to that version. But nothing in security is that easy. Bumping to a newer version of your package or library to address vulnerabilities may introduce some breaking changes that only developers would be able to foresee. That's why having a developer-centric approach in SEA is so important, not only to keep up with the speed of development, but to eliminate exposed vulnerabilities as fast as possible. With the right approach for SEA, you should be able to automatically and continually identify vulnerabilities in all your open source dependencies. You should also be able to surface that feedback directly to developers and their existing tools and workloads, and give them the granularity to bump the best version to avoid any breaking changes. While SEA is primarily designed to detect vulnerabilities and help developers fix them without breaking everything, they have another benefit that I'd like to call out. Licensing compliance. So far, we've covered open source software security consideration, but there are legal and compliance consideration when using open source software as well. Just like commercial software, open source software is covered by licenses that define how users can download, evaluate, deploy, redistribute, and modify the software. So as software developers integrate open source software into their code bases, so also integrating terms that they and their organization legally need to follow. Open source software can be covered by any number of licenses out there. Some licenses are more restrictive than others. Two of the most permissive and common licenses would be MIT and Apache 2.0 license. Software composition analysis also helps keep track of those obligations and minimize compliance and legal risk by scanning open source packages and dependencies, identifying all licensed texts, copyright info, 
and licensing obligations. And flagging software does it not comply with your organization requirements. So the last thing I want to cover is how SEA fits into the broader cloud native security landscape. To do this, let's explore the layers of cloud native application and the security measures needed for each of the staff. The foundation of cloud native application is the infrastructure. In code, those resources are defined and provisioned by things like infrastructure as code models and manifests. Cloud security, posture management solution, monitor your cloud and mis for misconfiguration, and IC security that shift lefts to prevent misconfiguration at the first place. On top of your infrastructure, you have your containerized application which are distributed across virtual machine, hosts, containers, Kubernetes, and serverless architecture. Cloud workload protection platforms helps to identify vulnerabilities in runtime as well as during deployment to prevent sourcing malicious or poisoned images for registries. Next, you'll find the application layer which is made out of open source and custom code that defines how the application functions. SEA is used to identify vulnerabilities in open source dependencies, while static application security testing and dynamic application security testing, also known as SAST and DAST for sure, are used to secure custom code. On top of everything, you have your APIs. Web application and API security are used to protect traffic in forms application. Finally, in order to store, manage, deliver, and test those software components, you need a network and repository delivery pipelines and registries. Supply chain security, specifically VCS and CICD security tools, helps follow and enforce best practices for your repositories and pipelines. As you can tell, SCA is just one component out of a real-rounded cloud-native security approach. All of these protections individually ensure that each layer is secure, but it's important to remember how to connect each layer to each other. That's why having a single cloud-native application protection platform, or CNAP, to provide visibly across all these components is the best way to minimize gaps in coverage, prioritize risk, and reduce false positives that come with any of these solution independently. Let's recap what we've covered in this episode of What's That? Early software composition analysis tools were built by AppSets for AppSets, which resulted in friction when developers were left with a laundry list of out of context reactive vulnerabilities. Modern SCA take a developer-first approach. In addition, for being developer-friendly, a well-rounded SCA solution includes limitless dependency scanning, infrastructure-aware context, and granular bump fixes. However, SCA is just one component of a well-rounded cloud-native application security program. From IAC security to core cloud protection, all of the layers within the cloud-native application need to be secured, and CNAPS makes it easier to provide coverage across the entire cloud-native stack and lifecycle. I hope you've gotten a solid foundation of why SCA exists, how it works, and how it fits into the cloud-native application security landscape in today's episode of What's That? Visit the Prisma Cloud and Bridge Crew blogs for a deeper dive into solution of best practices for SEA. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notification for more cloud native security and technology breakdowns in our other What's That videos. I'm Tohar, and this is What's That with Prisma Cloud. Until next time.